Hi guys, welcome back to my channel 32 Happy Teeth. Today we are going to study thyroid gland. But before starting with the topic, I would like to request you people to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon. As most of the people who are watching my videos haven't still subscribed. So please consider subscribing. Now let's start the video. So the thyroid gland is an endocrine gland and has a rich blood supply. It is present in the anterior portion of the neck that is it lies in the front part of the neck. It is shield like and uh, it regulates the basal metabolic rate. It is 25 grams in weight but it is larger in females as compared to male but this increased size in females is decreased during menstruation and pregnancy sorry guys this isn't maturation it's menstruation okay now moving on to the location uh, first before going to the location let's study about the structure so this uh, shield like thyroid gland is divided into right and left lobe and both of the lobes are connected by an isthmus and this isthmus lies at c2 to c4 position there is also a third lobe present which is called as the pyramidal lobe and this pyramidal lobe may be projected upwards from the isthmus or maybe from the right or the left lobes and uh, there is sometimes a fibrous band which is also called as the levator glandulae thyroidae present that descends from the body of the thyroid bone to the isthmus or to the pyramidal lobe that might be present on the isthmus itself or on any of the lobes. So in this particular diagram, you can appreciate that uh, this is your sternocleared muscle. The sternocleared muscle is present on both the sides of the neck. And this is your hyoid bone. Below the hyoid bone lies your thyroid cartilage and after thyroid lies your cricoid. So this cricoid cartilage, when it descends downwards, there it forms the trachea. So this is your trachea. See, here this is your thyroid gland. You can see that it is shield-like. And I said before that there are two lobes. See, this is your right and this one is your left. So these are your right and left lobes. And both of these lobes are connected by an isthmus. And where was this isthmus located? Yes, at C2, C4 position. Okay, now I also said, if you remember, about the pyramidal lobe. So this pyramidal lobe, it may be projected upwards and it may be present where maybe on the isthmus or maybe or on any of the lobes. Okay, so here you can't see the pyramidal lobe but it can be present in some of the cases but not in all the cases. Now moving on to the next slide. So this is your detailed picture of a thyroid gland. See, this is your thyroid bone. This is the levator glandulae thyroidae. As I said before, levator glandulae thyroidae is a band, a fibrous muscular band that descends from the thyroid bone. That is the body of the thyroid bone. You can appreciate the body of the thyroid bone. So, from the body of the thyroid bone to the isthmus, as shown in this diagram, okay, or maybe to the pyramidal lobe see in this particular diagram this is your pyramidal lobe and this levator glandular thyroid is uh, going where going to the pyramidal lobe which is which is present on the isthmus this is your right and left lobe this is the thyroid cartilage and the, this our uh, thyroid gland consists of two capsules true and a false capsule so what is this true capsule we will learn about this in detail in the next slide so this i will tell you in brief that the true capsule is the peripheral condensation of the connective tissue of the gland so the connective tissue of the gland condenses peripherally and this forms the true capsule okay now moving on this is your cricoid cartilage and this portion is called as the lateral lobe because it is present laterally okay this green color this is your cricotracheal membrane this is the isthmus you uh, you must be very well aware of this portion now this is your false capsule now what is the false capsule see we said that true capsule is a uh, con uh, peripheral condensation of the connective tissue of the gland and what about the false one false capsule is derived from the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia and these are the venous plexus so we will learn about the connection of the true false 
capsule and the venous plexus in the next slide see this is your fourth tracheal ring okay so you can very well appreciate the position uh, along with the vertebral levels of the thyroid gland now moving on to the capsule so capsule as i said before it is true and false so what is true capsule it is the peripheral condensation of the connective tissue of the gland so what happens is uh, there is a dense capillary plexus okay and where is this dense capillary plexus present it is present deep to the true capsule now when there is any operations uh, regarding this thyroid gland of or of thyroid gland so the thyroid gland should be removed along with the true capsule why because there are deep venous plexus cap sorry capillary plexus present beneath the true capsule hence the true capsule has to be removed along with the thyroid now you can compare this situation along with the prostate um, gland uh, during prostatectomy since the uh, two capsules of the prostate glands in between the two capsules there is a venous plexus present since both venous plexus is present in between the two capsules of the prostate gland you need to leave the capsules behind okay now what is false capsule so false capsule is derived from the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia and this capsule is thin and where is it present it is present on the posterior borders of the lobes if you remember in the diagram there is a false capsule that is present on the posterior border of the lobes but when it comes to the inner surface of the gland it is thick and on that inner surface area there it forms a suspensory ligament of berry and what is the function of the suspensory ligament uh, it's that that it connects the thyroid lobe to the cricoid cartilage now moving on to the diagram of the uh, thyroid gland capsules see this is your false capsule this is your true capsule and deep to the true capsule what is present yes a deep capillary plexus is present deep to the true capsule okay now moving on to the next slide uh, arterial supply so we will be studying arterial supply of the thyroid gland so the first and the foremost the first branch of the external carotid artery what is that yes it is your superior thyroid artery so the superior thyroid artery which is the first branch of external carotid artery it supplies which portion of the thyroid gland yes it supplies the upper one third of the thyroid gland now there is uh, this inferior thyroid artery that is a branch of thyro cervical trunk and where is this thyro cervical trunk arising from from the subclavian artery okay so subclavian artery branches into the thyro cervical trunk and then that trunk branches into the inferior thyroid artery and this inferior thyroid artery it supplies the lower two third of the thyroid gland and not just that but also parathyroid glands okay now only three percent push okay just a three percent lowest thyroid artery so this lowest thyroid artery is also called as thyroidia inna artery and it only constitutes about 3% of the cases and this lower lowest thyroid artery it arises from the right brachiocephalic artery and it is the only unpaired artery of thyroid uh, except this all of the thyroid arteries are paired yes but this one is unpaired now there is one more artery which supplies the thyroid gland and that is accessory thyroid artery now moving on to the next slide see you can see in this diagram that this is your upper portion of the thyroid gland and this is your superior thyroid artery and it supplies the upper one third of the thyroid gland and the lower two third of the thyroid gland is supplied by the inferior thyroid artery and it is arising from the subclavian artery yes so now we are done with the arterial supply now move on to the venous drainage so the venous drainage of the thyroid gland see the superior thyroid vein so the superior thyroid vein drains into the internal jugular vein then the middle portion that is the middle thyroid vein drains into the 
internal jugular vein and the inferior thyroid vein drains into the left brachiocephalic vein okay so superior middle and inferior so both superior and middle they drain into the internal jugular vein whereas the inferior thyroid vein drains into the left brachiocephalic vein there is a fourth thyroid vein which is also called as the cocher and this vein emerges from the middle and the inferior veins and they drain into the internal jugular vein so superior middle and the third sorry fourth thyroid vein all of th these that the three they drain into the internal jugular vein except the inferior thyroid vein which drains into the left brachiocephalic vein yes okay now moving on to the next slide in this diagram you can see that the superior thyroid vein and this middle thyroid vein both of them are entering into the internal jugular vein okay and the inferior thyroid vein where was it entering it was entering into the left brachiocephalic vein see it is going into the left brachi brachiocephalic vein whereas the superior and the middle is entering the left internal jugular vein now moving on to the next slide so coming to the lymphatic drainage the upper part of the thyroid gland uh, that drains into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes and the lower part of the thyroid gland drains into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes so the lymphatic drainage is very easy to remember now how will you remember upper part into the upper deep and lower part into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes now moving on to the nerve supply so the nerve supply of the thyroid gland is also very easy to remember that is it mainly the nerves is supplied from the middle cervical ganglion and partly from the the ones which are left that is the superior and the inferior cervical ganglion and all of these are vasoconstrictor okay so mainly from the middle and partly from the superior and inferior and these are vasoconstrictor so this was all about the thyroid gland. I hope you like this video and if you do so please hit the like button and share it with your friends who are searching for similar videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also please hit the like button so that whenever I post a new video you get a notification otherwise you will be missing out these videos. And there is a humble request from my side that the people who are watching my videos and they are finding it useful please go and subscribe my channel in this way you will motivate me to make more such videos because majority of the people haven't still subscribed till then take care bye bye